This is the Weekly on ClickOrlando.com with Justin Warmith. Good morning, I'm Justin Warmoth. The option to take a high-speed train from Orlando to Miami will soon become a reality. Brightline, which is already up and running in South Florida, has plans to start rolling through Central Florida by early 2023. And while excitement is building for the future, today the company is putting an emphasis on safety after a number of recent crashes at crossings in South Florida. This morning, the CEO of Brightline, Mike Reiniger, is here to break down the future of high-speed rail in the state of Florida. Some things that have been happening in South Florida as the trains have been rolled out. What can you tell us about um, some of the crashes, incidents, however you want to put it, um, and the learning curve I think drivers need to uh, get over? Yeah, so Justin, thank you for that uh, as a first question. Um, it gives us an opportunity to talk about the thing that really is central to our business and, and the most important thing for us day in and day out at Brightline, and that really is, is safety. Um, Nothing is more important um, to to the invent the, the advent of this new form of transportation than for it to be operating safely through the communities that it's ultimately going to be servicing. Mm -hmm. And so, in that regard, we've we've done a number of things to ensure that that really is the the ultimate outcome. From an engineering perspective, we have implemented safety equipment and systems and facilities that meet and in most cases exceed all the state and federal regulations associated with um, the operation of railroad corridors. And we continue to invest heavily in even more safety improvements in the form of fencing and signage and delineators and other things that help make you uh, aware of the presence of the, of the railroad and the trains on the tracks. From, a, from an equally important education perspective, we have had countless tens of thousands of interventions, whether they are in the form of public service uh, announcements or education programs with local law enforcement and first responders, with school groups, with community groups. We've even sponsored special events where we emphasize the importance of the safety message, all in the idea, under the idea of raising people's awareness of the, of the, of the introduction of trains on the railroad corridor. Mm -hmm. And we do that really on a, on a constant basis. In the end, however, all of that really comes down to reliance on personal behavior. And in that regard, I, I'd like to emphasize two of the most important, really simple rules to follow. Number one is, as a pedestrian, it is never okay to be inside the railroad right away. It can be a dangerous place if you're distracted, if you're focused on other things, it can only lead to tragic events. And so it is never okay as a pedestrian to be inside the, the, the right of way. If you have to cross a, right, a, a rail corridor as a pedestrian, do so only at the designated intersections where it, where it will be safe if you follow all the other safety protocol that are in place for you there. And as a motorist, and perhaps most importantly, never ever try to beat the train. The, the incidents that we've experienced to date have really all been a consequence of those two things occurring in the right of way. So, so you giving us this opportunity to talk to a broad audience is yet another opportunity for us to spread that all important message about being safe around the railroad. Thank you for clearing that up. But I do wanna to get to some of the exciting things that, that Brightline has uh, in store. What, what is currently happening down in South Florida as far as the rollout? And then what can we expect here in Central Florida as far as the expansion to MCO? So since November, we've been back in operation in South Florida. We're, we're running trains daily between our headquarters uh, location at Miami Central and downtown Miami through Fort Lauderdale into West Palm Beach. Uh, and we're running uh, trains daily there and we are seeing um, improving ridership day over day, month over month since we've been back in operation post COVID. Mm -hmm. um, and um, meanwhile, we're also under construction with two new station locations in South Florida, one in Aventura and one in Boca, which we're looking forward to opening later in the fall of this year, which will add an expanded sort of service profile for us in South Florida. But the real prize, the thing that we've been working on for a very long time is the advent of service into the Orlando International Airport. And that is really the vision for this alternative form of transportation that we've always been focused on and we're getting very, very close to that now. This is a, down in South Florida currently, right now, 
you're seeing a lot of folks, I mean, it's a commuter rail. Is that what you're seeing? The, the majority of folks who are taking the bright line, is that, is that essentially, is it a commuter rail people going to and from work? Yeah, so, so we really see a pretty diverse audience of people mm -hmm. and, and, and riding the train for a, a number of reasons. Certainly going to work is, is one of the reasons. Um, the, the nature of people going to the work, as you well know, is changing right now. Uh, and so we're seeing a little bit of uh, pattern changes as a result of that as well. But there are also lots of people moving around in South Florida for other reasons that are related to sort of their normal day-to-day -day life, but also to especially going to things for a leisure purpose. Um, we see a lot of people that are taking advantage of the opportunity to go to events, for instance, um, whereby they can leave their car at home and travel in a much more carefree, car-free, as we like to say, way to get to participate in some of the amazing things that are happening, you know, day to day in South Florida. As we look forward to Central Florida, we see that that is going to be a, another really important element of what this transportation option is going to provide. Uh, as far as I, I hate to compare, um, but they are two different, you know, trains and, and the capabilities are certainly different. But for folks who are familiar with what Sun, Sunrail provides here in Central Florida, how will Brightline compare and will that be more of a, a partnership in the future? So ultimately, the, what, what, we, what we do is what we refer to as intercity service. Our, 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 everything about our service, our stations, our trains, the onboard experience, everything is really geared towards providing a better way to travel. And the longer you're on the train, the more you appreciate the experience of the upgraded um, scenario that we offer on our, on our system. We think at the end of the day, however, it works importantly with local commuter operations. We think of them as feeder systems, which help us expand the network of connections that we can make for people that are trying to travel in some way other than using their private cars on what are you know, severely overcrowded roadways for the most part all over the state of Florida. Florida has been the beneficiary of, of, of a tremendous sort of economic growth pattern for years, uh, as of late has been really accelerating in that regard. But the consequence of that is it puts pressure on our existing infrastructure. So our investment in an infrastructure system that relieves um, some of the pressure on those existing road systems and gives you another way of getting around is really what Brightline is all about. How does a Brightline train compare to trains of the past and why is it, why is it more efficient? Why is it better for the environment? Well, listen, inherently, traveling by train is, is, from the start, significantly more environmentally friendly than the alternative, somewhere between two and three times more environmentally friendly than the alternative of cars and, and flying. Our particular trains are um, taking that sort of a notch up. They, these are the most state-of-the-art uh, diesel electric trains that have ever been manufactured in the United States. We burn biodiesel, which is yet another level of sort of um, uh, improvement that we make the overall performance from an environmental perspective. I talked about our new introduction of the Brightline Plus service. That is premised on an electric vehicle base. So if you're using our, our premium level service, you'll be picked up and dropped off in electric vehicles. If you're using our smart service, a combination of electric uh, enclosed golf carts and um, shuttles will also be a part of your experience. So, so we focus heavily on all aspects of the environmental footprint of our service, including that associated with the transportation service itself. Coming up, we'll go over ticket prices and the amenities on board, plus the possibility of eventually expanding service to Tampa. Stay with us. This is the weekly on ClickOrlando.com with Justin Warmith. Welcome back. By this time next year, you'll likely have the option to take a high-speed train from Orlando to Miami. Brightline, the only private passenger rail company in the U.S., hopes to wrap up construction in central Florida by late this year. CEO Mike Reiniger is back with us now and explains what it'll be like when service gets underway. When this ultimately becomes um, in full service from Miami to Orlando, what does that run? What does that look like? So we've been under construction with the extension from West Palm Beach into Orlando for a couple of years now. Um, at the end of this year, we will complete that construction effort. Every day that goes by, we get a little bit closer, but really 
we're targeting the end of this year, sometime in December, that the construction effort all the way into the Orlando airport will be complete. Immediately thereafter, we'll be completing our training exercises for our crew, uh, and then we'll be running the service from Orlando International Airport all the way down into Miami Central Station. It's a trip that will take about three hours. Mm -hmm. It will be completely hassle-free. It will have the availability of a new service that we've just launched called Brightline Plus at both ends. Brightline Plus is really a ground transportation service that will be added to your train connection, which will allow you to have a true door-to-door -door service. Within our service radiuses, we can pick you up wherever you are, bring you to the station, let you board the train, and then when you arrive at your end destination, we'll take you to wherever it is that you want to go. So we call that the first and last mile connectivity. All of that will be available in a completely branded experience end to end. And so as far as ticket pricing and, and user experience, once folks do get on the train, I mean, obviously Wi-Fi is so important as folks work. Um, but what does that look like? What, it, what will it cost? Um, and let's go over some of those, those factors. Yeah, so we're gonna, we price our product so it is um, significantly cheaper than flying, uh, but takes about the same time and about the same price as it would cost you to actually drive your car, but with a significant time savings. And so when somebody gets on the train in Orlando to go to Miami or vice versa, they can expect a ticket price somewhere around $100. Got it. And uh, any other, what, you know, I, there's Amtrak and things like that, but not a lot of people have, have been on rail or traveled by rail in today's day and age, especially the younger folks. But um, I mean, what amenities, let's talk amenities or is it, are you just getting on and, and just riding? You know what I mean? No, 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 not at all. So, so um, we're very proud of the fact that we are the only private sector passenger rail system that has been constructed from scratch and is in operation anywhere in America. Mm -hmm. And in order for us to be successful, we've approached this business not really as a transportation service, but as a hospitality service. So mm -hmm. from start to finish, from everything of the smallest nature to the big picture things, we have built this like a hospitality company would. So, so yeah, you mentioned Wi-Fi. We have, we have connectivity um, constantly from the minute you come into our stations on board our trains and all the way until you leave at your destinations uh, station, you can be connected to our robust Wi-Fi system and do pretty much everything that you can do at home on board one time. Authenticate onto the system one time and you stay on it entirely. We have an entirely um, hygienic and touchless environment. So we're cashless and touchless in our stations. Our trains were designed so that things like the bathrooms are touchless. We have automated doors, we have automated um, toilets and, and, um, and drying and, and water. Um, so we have, we have absolutely um, the most hygienic form of travel that you can, you can avail yourself of anywhere in the country. So uh, whether, it's, whether it's connectivity on Wi-Fi or the availability of power ports or incredibly comfortable reclining leather seats, or the service level that we offer with food and, and beverage on board in the stations, top to bottom, you're gonna find a very high level of amenitization every way along the, every step along the way. How many trains, A, how many trains um, do you have now and how many eventually do you, do you have in, in your mind and what's the vision there? And, and B, how often will there be uh, like, a train from, let's just say, let's just use it since we've been using it, Orlando to Miami, how often will they depart and arrive? So when we initiated the service in South Florida, we, we manufactured five uh, brand new custom built train sets in order to put that service uh, into operation. Mm -hmm. We ordered an additional five and some extra cars to extend the length of the trains uh, in concert with the advent of the Orlando service. Of those new five, We've received two of them. One of them is in our uh, maintenance facility in West Palm Beach. And, and interestingly, the first of the new fleet um, has actually arrived in Orlando and in our new vehicle maintenance facility uh, at the airport, um, our, our first train is in residence there and it's, making, it's being prepared for its service operation there. Over the course of the next couple of months, we're gonna receive three more trains, bringing them into the Orlando facility and getting them ready for 
uh, this service to start very early next year. And when we go into service, um, really the idea is that we will have a train leaving from both ends, Miami and Orlando, pretty much every hour from relatively early in the morning to, a, to relatively late at night. And the idea there is we want to be ready to go when you're ready to go. And so within an hour or a little bit less than an hour, there will be a train departing from both ends heading towards your end destination. You know, with Orlando being such a, in the, you know, right in the middle of the state, this has got to be uh, crucial for Brightline uh, to have this. And you can explain more on that. Why is it so crucial for Orlando to be one of these hubs of, of Brightline um, to help folks really across the state? Yeah, there are there are a handful of markets in the country that that we believe are just ideal for the introduction of this kind of inner city high speed passenger rail system. Um, none, uh, you know, more so than the central Florida to South Florida market. You know, they're they're both characterized by very large population centers and growing at, at each of those two ends. As you pointed out, that they they're they're very vibrant, but there are some key things about each of those markets that are different from each other. Um, both very appealing, but different. And there and as a result of that, there is a significant amount of day to day travel that happens between those markets every day. Today, it's reliant on a relatively limited air service um, that's not particularly efficient because the flight time itself is so short. Uh, and the vast majority of people that are traveling back and forth today are doing so on private road, uh, private cars on those road systems. And especially as you get close to South Florida, those road systems are among the most congested roads anywhere in the country. So it's against that backdrop that the introduction of a smarter way to travel becomes a real important uh, alternative for people's mobility needs. And that's why we chose Florida as the place to introduce this groundbreaking new kind of service into the American marketplace. You know, I, I know there's only so much you can tell me, um, but I have to ask this because I think folks at home are wondering uh, what, what about Tampa and, and eventually I know that that's something that you, you have said in, in the past, but what can you, what can you say about, you know, I know we're still need to get through Orlando and, and that expansion, but what can you say about the future of, of, maybe or sure. go to Tampa. Yeah, listen, without taking the focus off, off the all important efforts to conclude our original vision into into Orlando, which, you know, we work very hard on every day. It really isn't a secret that we always think about the next thing. And and for us, Tampa is the next obvious point of connectivity mm -hmm. that we see for our system. For the very same reasons, it's the next very large um, marketplace there is an enormous amount of travel that happens between Tampa and Orlando alone today. And it's really constricted to one road system that for any of you that have ever driven that know is a, you know, is a less than ideal experience. And so against that backdrop, the idea of getting in a very comfortable train um, that will whisk you from Tampa to Orlando is an appealing thing that we're working hard to try to deliver into the marketplace. Sign me up. My thanks to Mike Reiniger for the time this week. For more information on Brightline, just head to clickorlando.com weekly. I'm Justin Mormuth. Hope you have a great Sunday.